man. Will you give God praise for that?
this morning, God. Come right now like never before, Jesus. Lord, just fill this room with your Holy Spirit.
Would you just lift up both hands right now and begin to say, my God, that's who you are. You're my God, and I love you. My God, I worship you. My God, I'll serve you and follow you. My God, here today, I'll exalt you and lift you up. You are my miracle worker. You are my promise keeper. You are here, here with us in the service today, and we exalt you. We desire to draw near to you. We desire to follow you, and we desire to submit to you. We desire to obey your word and obey your commands. Father, we look forward to sharing in communion together as the men begin to pass out the emblems. Let me just remind you, we have family worship today. And so, moms and dads, if you'll help us, for everyone that's made that declaration and that decision for Jesus Christ, go ahead and celebrate with us. If you have not, I encourage you, please, do not receive a communion cup. This is for the children of God. This is for the people of God. This is for those committed to Jesus Christ, to know Him and to make him known. Once you receive that, just want you just to hold on to it. Pastor Alexi, just sing that again. My God, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. you we magnify you Isaiah chapter 53 says he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering like one from whom men hid their faces he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he took up our infirmities he carried our sorrows yet we considered him stricken by God smitten by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions that's our sins he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed father I thank you for the love and for the obedience of your son Jesus Christ today on this Sunday we gather on this Sunday, Lord, we look forward to sharing and receiving the emblems, which brings back to our memory what Jesus did on the cross, how he was viewed and how he was looked at and how he was mocked and how he was, uh, how he was cursed, how he was bruised and how he was pierced on Calvary for our sins and our transgressions we commit to Jesus our lives we commit to him our all we want to thank you that you are our divine healer as we just looked at this beautiful subject and this beautiful benefit last week today God as we receive of the emblems father we know that you are our healer and that by your stripes we are healed so we exalt you and we honor you and we follow you in Jesus' name. If you would take the cup, this little packet, and just push down on the tab, if you would. That kind of breaks the seal. It's going to release that top part, if you would. Take that top cellophane off. It'll reveal that cracker. If you would, just break that in two. Just lift it up and say, Jesus, your body was broken for me. Go on. Lift it up. Break it in two. Say, Jesus, your body was broken for me. Dads and moms, think about it. Your family was broken for your family, for your boys and girls that are here with you today. Jesus became the one who bore 
our sins on the cross and remove them as far as the east is from the west. He's forgiven us and cleansed us. He's made us new creations. He's given us freedom in Christ. And today, we stand victorious in Him. Father, have Your will. May it be done in our lives. And may You be glorified in this place today. In Jesus' name, eat all of it today, would you? Then if you would pull that next flap back, might take just a little bit of energy, hold it tight, pull that back and it reveals the cup. In our hands, Lord, we have the symbol. It's in our hands, juice, but Father, this symbolizes your shed blood, shed on the cross to wipe away the slate of sin and also to heal our sick and broken bodies father we take this today to symbolize that we are your people your children the sheep of your pasture it symbolizes today just the cleansing that we need the freedom from sin and sickness anyone here sick today I want you to receive this and I want you to accept this knowing that Jesus is your divine healer so by your stripes, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the touch of the Master's hands. Thank you for the blood that was spilt on Calvary's cross. We lay our lives out on the altar. And we're crucified with Christ today. In Jesus' name, would you drink all of it? And I want you to receive the fullness I want you to receive the benefit. Psalms 103 talks about the benefits. Would you just lift up your hands and say, Jesus, I owe my life to you. I owe it all to you. I stand today as a testimony of your goodness and grace. God, we love you. We exalt you and we lift you up. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our families. Have your way in our bodies. Touch us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Ushers are coming around with baskets, but we're going to continue to worship today talking about the blood.
Thank you, Jesus. This time, the children are dismissed to go out back into children's church, and you may be seated. I've got some prayer needs in our church. If you would, please join your heart with mine and all of us together and pray for some, some folks. Lord Jesus, on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ, Father, we lift up Sherry Pryor, Father, who has had a successful surgery, Lord, and we're grateful for that. We pray for her complete recovery, Father God, now. For Marilyn Zeeler, recovering from gallbladder surgery, Father God. Miss Tammy's mother, Father, we just pray you continue to heal her. Let it be quick, Lord, and full a full restoration of her body, Father. For our dear sister Karen's mom, Fern Wilder, Father, we lift her up, Lord, as she has uh, suffered a stroke that's affected the left side of her body. I know that Karen and Kevin and, and her bro Karen's brother and others have been there, and Sandy, I'm sure, loving on her, Lord, and praying, knowing that you were there with her. Now, Lord, we just ask for your miracle work in her body. We ask that you would touch her, Lord, Touch the doctors and nurses and the machines and the medication that she has to have, Father, to give her a full recovery. In your precious name, Father, pour your blood out upon her and heal her whole, make her whole, Lord Jesus. For Faith United Baptist Church, Pastor Willie Brown, Lord, we pray that that church is just busting at the seams today with your Holy Spirit. Sure, there are many there, Lord, who have not been touched by you. And I pray that as has occurred here, that the songs that they sang, Lord, have touched those hearts, minds, and souls and softened those hearts and opened their ears and their eyes in a way that they won't forget that day. Maybe it's the day they finally get out of their seat, come to the altar and give their lives to you, Father. For our missionaries, Rich and Laura Smiley in Central Eurasia, Lord, Lord, we pray for their protection. We pray for resources, Lord. And we pray for especially for their success in spreading the gospel. We pray that others would come, Lord, and be willing participants in spreading your word amongst that group. We pray all this in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said? That was weak. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. There you go. Thank you, Les. Leading us in prayer, leading us before the throne of God's grace. He is good. And everybody said, Amen. he's a good God. He loves us. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves your kids, your grandkids. He loves everything about you. And he is for you. I want you to turn in your Bibles. It's a unique scripture for the offering today. We're going to go Old Testament, Second Chronicles. And if you would turn to Verse, uh, let's see here, did I get it right? There it is, uh, 31, Second Chronicles 31. And he was given some instructions out for both worship and for giving. 
and in verse 5, 2 Chronicles 31, 5, as soon as the order went out, the Israelites generously gave the first fruits of their grain, new wine, oil, and honey, and all that the fields produced for us today in the work of our hands and how God has blessed us with possibly a paycheck or salary or how God has brought finances in. Then the next couple sentences, they brought a great amount, a tithe of everything. A tithe of everything is brought to the house of the Lord, and we bring it in. It's first. uh, It's not later. It's not if I can get to it. It's right at the beginning off the top. First day of the week, and the Lord brings His multiplied blessings back to it. I want to pray for you as you worship the Lord with your giving today. Whether you've already given online, do that today. You'll bring it to the offering uh, at the altar. Let's pray together. Father, I give you thanks and I give you praise for you are here with us in this service on July 3rd, 2022. Just as in the Old Testament with King Hezekiah, Lord, today may we be found faithful to bring a tithe of everything into the house of the Lord so that, Lord, your house can continue to move forward and minister. Our missionaries can continue, Lord, to be where they are overseas, sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus, and that, Lord, lives are being changed. Have your way, Lord, in this moment of our declaration of faith in you. You are Lord of all, and we praise you and bless you with these gifts. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Hi, my name is Chad Stavely, and these are your July announcements. During the month of July, there will be no prayer service or joy events. However, we would love for you to join us for our next prayer night on August 7th. The next joy event will be on August 12th and is open to all adults ages 50 and up. Tonight at 8.30, OA Young Adults are meeting up to watch the O'Fallon fireworks. The event starts at 8.30, but we will meet at the church at 7.45 for anyone who needs a ride or would like to carpool. Please contact myself or Pastor Lexi with any questions. July 9th from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. is our OA Students Yard Sale. You never know what you may find, so make sure to spread the word to your friends and your family. The Royal Rangers National Camp Arama is July 10th through 15th in Eagle Rock, Missouri. If you would like more information on this event, please contact Commander Russ Hayden. Breakaway Team Camp is July 18th through 22nd at Lake Williamson. Join us in praying for everyone that is attending. There will be no youth student services on July 13th and 20th of this month. The OA Kids Nerf and Nachos Night is July 22nd at 5. This is going to be a super fun night for our boys and girls, so please contact Pastor Ashland if you have any (laughs) questions. The next Glow Ministry event will be a breakfast on July 30th at 9.30. These events are always a great time for women of all ages. Contact Teresa Ariola if you are interested. Lastly, there are now two adult Sunday school classes that you can attend every week at 9 a.m. One class is currently discussing how to discern the voice of God and meets in the Higher Grounds Coffee Bar. Another class is learning lessons in discipleship from the New Testament Church and meets in the auditorium. There are classes for all ages that you do not want to miss. Thank you for listening to our announcements today, and I hope you have an amazing month of July. Amen. God bless you. Stand if you would. Got about 90 seconds to just say hello to somebody around you. Give them your greeting. Give them your blessing. 90 seconds and go.
right. I think it's about 89 seconds, and so clock at 90. We'll continue to move on. So glad to have you in worship today. So good to see you. On this July 4th weekend, trust that uh, as you recognize the independence of our great country, that we also, on this Sunday, it was beautiful how the dovetail of recognizing our independence and also our dependence on Jesus who set us free and gave us just the ability to be forgiven, to be cleansed, and to be made whole in His name. So you heard the announcements from Chad Stavely, and uh, I think you need to give this guy a big old hand. He did a good job sitting up here in the front, Pastor Lexi's husband. Just want to emphasize and highlight my youth pastor sitting there in the back, standing there in the back. And so he wants to make sure that you know a couple of things. Today is the last day for the book drive. And if you can help him, these books translate into dollars, dollars for ministry. And if you can't get it today, see him. I'm sure he'll wait on you if you've got a box, if you've got a bag, whatever it is. It's the last day for that. And then also, I wanted to say on his behalf that this coming Saturday, he could use additional helpers. He really could use some people who love garage sale and love putting prices on things, love talking to people and being involved in this. This is uh, a ministry that he's taken on. It's for missions. And so if you would either see him or his lovely wife, Melissa, Melissa, wave your hand, talk to them about it. It starts early on a Saturday at seven o'clock, but I know it's going to be working throughout the week. And I've seen you bring your stuff. I mean, you brought a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff, furniture and other items, and you still can do that. Uh, Just talk to Pastor Josh or his wife, Melissa. And then, uh, last thing, it's in the bulletin, just want to highlight it. It is one month away from Vacation Bible School 2022, and uh, it is going to be an exciting time as we as a church minister and share the love of Jesus to families and to children. A lot of work's going to happen between now and then. So Pastor Ashlyn, could, she would love to hear from you. There's a sign up at the Welcome Center. Just write your name down saying, hey, I'm willing to serve um, wherever you need me. And uh, there'll be a place for you uh, in that week of ministry. Also, as like last Sunday, another couple is moving on to uh, serve at a new station in our military, nation's military, and we are just, uh, we're delighted that we've been able to do life together and serve with this couple, but as they follow the orders and as they head down to the panhandle of Florida, that's Nate and Regina Sherman. They have been a tremendous blessing. I'm going to ask them to stand. Uh, They are in the Air Force and doing a tremendous job, and I just want us to pray for them. How many would do that? My goodness. Nate, one, one memory sticks out of, of you. Uh, of course, you and your wife serving on some of the work days side by side. But one of them where it just stood out, whenever we cleaned out the shed and we had a huge dumpster, and for whatever reason, you found your place up there and you were just organizing the trash. That thing was heavy. I mean, he had it lined out. Everything we tossed up there, he organized it so we didn't lose any space. He's a servant. And we're just going to pray that God would go with you and your wife, Regina, down to Florida. Stretch forth your hand as we do on this last Sunday of worship together. Father, we thank you for this couple that we've been able to, Lord, minister together. We've been able, Lord, to be involved in the church together. And Lord, I thank you for their love and their service and their partnership in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as they head out and move down to Florida, we pray that you would, Lord, allow them to find another loving congregation, Lord, a church family that they can be a part of. I pray that you help them in the move. I, help, I pray that everything goes smooth. And I pray that you would, Lord, just bless them abundantly. Use them, Lord, 
for your glory and for your namesake. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap for He is the Lord. He's the Lord of the church. And uh, we give Him glory and we give Him honor. Today I want you to take your Bibles. And remember, uh, we do have some notes on version. If you've not downloaded the app, I would really encourage you to do that because it is a huge blessing. Next Sunday is going to uh, start, really, the Monday after, but we're going to start a new Bible devotional. It's through version. so if you haven't downloaded it, I would encourage you to do that um, because at the bottom right-hand corner, you can click that on, click events, and find our church and there's a few notes, and you can add notes to that each and every week. But we're going to go to the uh, New Testament today, and the book of Acts, if you would, turn there. While you're turning, let me just kind of share with you where we have been for the last five weeks in the series of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and We've looked at so many different things of the connection of the Holy Spirit and last week was and divine healing. The Holy Spirit's in the midst, involved in the work of healing, bringing the presence of Jesus into our lives and ministering to us and changing us. Today, I feel led to just preach on the church, the beauty of the church. You and I are a part of the church. It's, it's not the building. It's, it's not what we're talking about when we say the church. Uh, we're talking about people. I want you to look to everybody around you. Right now, just look to as many people as you can. Look them in the eye and say, that's right. You're, you're destiny. You're a part of the church. There you go. Betty, you're a part of the church. Mike, you're a part of the church. Just look around. Come on, look around. You're a part of the church. Mary Rose, a part of the church. Over here, soon he, a part of the church. All of us, a part of the church. Betty, part of the church. Over here, you got, you got Tom and you got Carolyn. Just, just all of us are part of the church. When you look at the word church in the Greek, if you want to go that route, ekklesia is the word. Ek, if you look, look at that word, it simply means to out of. Klesia or klesis is that of a calling. So it's a calling out of. It's the people of God being called out of the world and being into, gathered into the body of Christ. The whole company of the redeemed is what the church is throughout the present area. The company of which Christ Jesus said, I will build my church. I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build with my people. It's going to be a kingdom, a kingdom of light. It's going to be a kingdom of righteousness, goodness, mercy, and love. It's going to, it's going to minister to every heart and to every life. A churchgoer wrote a letter to the editor of a newspaper and just really complained in a negative way. He said it made no sense to go to church every single Sunday. This is what he wrote in the letter. I've gone to church for 30 years now, and in that time I have heard something like 3,000 sermons. But for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. I think I'm wasting my time, and the pastors are wasting their time by giving these sermons. Wow, this started a firestorm of controversy in the letters to the editor over the next several weeks. It went on until there was this clincher, someone who wrote this in their reply. And this is what they wrote. I've been married for 30 years now. In that time, my wife has cooked me 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu of a single one of these meals. But I do know this. Those meals nourished me, gave me the strength I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. 
Likewise, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today as well. Everybody say boom. Boom. That was just a reply of strength and the knowledge that we need the nourishment. We need the encouragement. We need the edification. We need the ministry of the body of Christ. It might be so easy to hit the snooze button on Sunday morning. Even if you had things lined up, clothes laid out, all the best intentions of times can be pushed aside for a little bit more rest and relaxation. Yeah, the thought comes, I'll make it next week. I can just have another time of rest. A college professor made this statement, and it's got some validity to it. He told the students in his class, you know what, people are only two weeks away from being out of the church. Two weeks away from being out of the flow, the rhythm, if you will, of church life and church ministry. So why, why the church? Why should we be a part of? Why should we go? to church. Think of it this way. You go to school to get an education so you can make a living. You go to work to earn a paycheck so you can do what? Everybody say it. Pay the bills. You go to the gym to stay fit and get in shape. You go to the mall to shop for your clothes and shoes. Today it's being changed by you shop online. Any shoppers online in the house? Amen. You go to the grocery store to buy food. You go to the lake to enjoy the scenery and fish. You go to the blues game to cheer on the blues. You go to the golf course for fun and relaxation. You go to the restaurant to enjoy a good meal that's cooked and served for you. You go to the state fair to enjoy the rides, taste fair food, and meet friends. My son snapped me a little picture of him in line with... uh, the food uh, truck in front of them of the five or six different items and we asked we're yet at the state fair with my friends why do you go to the church what does the church provide for you what does it provide for your family there's always going to be excuses for people who would say I can't go to church I don't have time for it so much so that a lady named Allison Shedd made her top ten list of why People don't attend church. Excuse one, you ever heard this? The church is full of hypocrites. Number two, well, I've been hurt by the church. I'm not going back. Number three, I really don't get anything out of the church. Number four, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian or even to go to heaven. Excuse five, my child is extremely gifted in athletics and plays games on Sundays, and I've got to be there with him. Number six, I work on Sundays. Number seven, I can just watch church on television, or today, live stream it on the church's page. Number eight, Pastor, we were out late Saturday night. I can't be in the church on Sunday. Number nine, my husband or my wife is out of town, and I don't want to go to church alone. I hate that one. I just hate when you got one and I, the other person's now, I, I, I can't go. If they're gone, I can't go. And then excuse number 10, we can do church at home. Can you really? Church attendance rhythm is really important to have the relationship, to have that regularity, to have that connection, to have that recharge. Think about it this way. Boxers, they need rests between rounds. Race drivers, they need to go ahead and refuel after so many laps, and it's down to a science by the crew chief. Basketball players need halftime for a much-needed recharge and refocus and reassessment of what happened in the first half, especially if they got blew out. Friends, church helps us to refuel, to refocus, to recharge for the following week. This rhythm is essential. 
worship experience is essential. It helps you to keep Christ at the center of your life. It allows you to sing the songs that have been sung over and over again and just to kind of just sing them through. I love to see our kids singing over the songs that they learned at kids camp as they were provided the playlist on, of course, our kids' ministry page. They love the songs, and it just allows them to sing and sing it again and again. It allows us to mature in Christ and draw closer to Him. So I put the title today for Cling to the Church. I want everybody to say it together. One, two, three. Cling to the church. You say, why, Pastor? Why, do you, why are you making this title? Why, why are you bringing this message? Because uh, of the necessity that we must, in the day that we live, cling to His church. I'm not talking about holding on uh, to the front door. I'm not talking about holding on to the platform. I'm talking about holding on to the fellowship of the body of Christ and being there, being a part of it, involved, connected to the church. For cling simply means this, fasten, embrace, cherish, to grasp, to grip, to clutch, to hold and hang on to. The opposite is also true. Opposite of cling is to loosen, discontinue, stop detach and simply let go. Acts chapter 2 is a picture of the early church. The church was born on the day of Pentecost and things are happening, things are moving, things are growing, fellowship is strong and enriched and I think we have some specific things that I want to look at today that will encourage us and that will remind us of the validity and the benefit and the power of all of us being in His church. It's not the building, it's the people, and the people are to be in fellowship with His church. Number one, I want you to look at this. I'm not going to read the passage, but we are going to look through it and share with the thoughts for each one. Verse number 42 says this, the church provides for you and me the essentials of discipleship. Discipleship for followers. The commands that Jesus gave, uh, we need to embrace them. We need to hold on to them. We need to follow them. And we find some of the words in this passage which describes discipleship. Let me share them with you. Teaching. Fellowship. The breaking of bread. Prayer. And also praise in verse number 47 we find these elements of discipleship that are like connecting the dots if you were to if you were to make a picture and all you've got is dots on the screen or or on the page you connect the dots to see what what comes of that picture these are the dots of the church the dots that connect us to discipleship as we learn what it means to be a faithful disciple of Jesus, the church is where it's at. It's his church. And what did he say? I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not, will not come against it. But there's a couple of words that are so important when we look at this passage. Look at verse 42. Don't know what it says in your Bible, but in mine it says this, they devoted themselves they devoted themselves to this wonderful network of the dots of discipleship. We can look at it in the Living Bible. It says they joined with the other believers in regular attendance at the apostles' teaching sessions. In the message, it says they committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles. And then the Amplified puts it like this. They were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to fellowship and to eating meals together and to prayers. Who was doing this? They were doing this themselves, committing themselves, knowing of the power, the, the profit, the, the benefit that the church was to them as a disciple of Jesus Christ. They committed, they devoted, and they were there. 
Early church provided proper biblical instruction and teaching, giving wonderful, genuine opportunities for fellowship. They even held life group dinners, as we would call it, those dinners in homes uh, like they did in the early church. Uh, they went ahead and stressed the necessity of praying together and seeking God uh, passionately. Here, Middle Fallon Assembly, we, we offer that same thing, the validity of discipleship, providing balanced levels of teaching for the different age groups, for children as well as our adults. We also understand the power of the breaking of bread. It speaks to communion. It also speaks to fellowship. And that's something the church is involved and responsible for, just like we did this morning. We also, last week, were involved in water baptism of four precious followers of Jesus, seeing the church lead in discipleship through salvation and then next through water baptism and on the journey goes of Christian and to Christian maturity. We want, to, we want to move them along the process from being a babe in Christ, moving them to a toddler. We want to move them from a toddler to an elementary student, from an elementary to junior high, junior high to high school, high school to college, and college to the master's and doctorate levels. It's the desire of the church helping us to grow to spiritual maturity. I don't think some of our teachers back in this wing, Chris, kind of helped me out here, but I don't think your wife would really want to, to teach the same class for year after year after year after year. She's going to be able to hand them off to the next teacher because they're, lead, they're leading to another age group, and then they're going to pass them off to another until they, they go through the cycle, and we all are cycling through the levels of discipleship to learn and to grow in Jesus Christ. Number two, look at verse 43 with me. Verse 43 says, everyone was filled with awe. I want you to say that word, not A-H, but A-W-E. Are you ready? One, two, three, say, awe. What does that mean? They were filled with awe. Awe, the reverence of understanding that God is here in our midst. God is amongst us. God is moving. I can see him move, but I can also feel him move. Now, we sang a song this morning that says, even if I can't feel him, I know he's moving. Even if I can't see it, I, I know he's moving. But there's times in the church where things just so like a crescendo of God's presence begins to develop and lay on the top of everyone's hearts and minds, and we see, feel, we know what he is up to. We've got to understand in the message, it says like this, everyone around was in awe for all the wonders and signs done through the apostles. Amplified says there's a sense of awe, reverential fear came upon every soul. They were in awe. They felt, they saw, they knew that God was there. New living, a deep sense of awe, caver came over them all. You know what? We can feel, we can know, and we can be in the sense of awe that this is his church and he is doing what he desires to do in every gathering, in every classroom, at every prayer meeting, at every Wednesday night Bible study, at every outreach, at every fellowship, at every life group dinner, God shows up. Do I hear an amen? amen. And whenever he shows up and you're not there, guess what? I missed it down deep in your soul. It's like, wow, I really missed God doing something at the prayer meeting. If you were there at the prayer meeting last month, knowing that God moved in a wonderful way, Wednesday night, there's times that God moves, and it just is amazing. We're in awe of what He can accomplish and what He can do. Times of fellowship, awe of the body of Christ. I love to hear when you say, that's my church. It's my church. And I love my church, and I love being a part of everything that goes on in my church. I love it when God answers prayer. You never know what God is up to 
But God's up to something at every gathering, at every point, and you know He is there. He's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of times or services. He'll move in the time spot that He wants to because He's God. He wants to reveal to somebody of who He is and what He's like. He'll show love and compassion. Other times, He'll show sternness and discipline. And other times, He'll show celebration and victory. Other times, He'll show salvation, deliverance. Other times, divine healing. He is God. And when He moves, we need to be in awe of Him and of His glory and of His wonder. To be awed is an overwhelming feeling of reverence. This is the definition. Admiration, fear, produced by that which is grand, sublime, extremely powerful, or the like, in awe of God. The church provides that place for us to come together so that when our worship leader and worship team leads us into the presence of God, we ought to be in awe of who He is and that He is here with us. Why? When two or three gather together in my name, what did he say? I'm going to be right there in the middle of them. Do we have that quote of this morning? Say amen. amen. I got two and three right there in that one row. God is here. He promised it and he is here. We need to be in awe. Not of who's here in the church, but because he's here and that we know that he is here amongst us doing what he so desires, shaping us, forming us, conforming us to his will and presence. There's also something else that goes on. The book of Acts chapter 5 talks about it in verse 5 and 11. Ananias and Sapphira, the story goes... The church, they were bringing gifts and the church was sharing together and they brought something and they lied about what they brought. Bold-faced lie. One of them drops dead, the next one comes and they said, did you do this? Yes, we did that. Bold lie again. Bam, just on the ground, dead as well. And through this experience of repercussions through lying, it says in verse 5 and 11, great fear and awe gripped the whole church, gripped, and all who heard about these things, in awe of God, in awe of His commands, in awe of being faithful, honorable, people of integrity, and people that will follow His Word. Number three, it provides this. I love this one. It provides community. It provides community and fellowship. Verse number 44, I'm going to have it on the screen here in just a moment, says, and all the believers met together constantly and shared everything with, everybody say, each other. Turn to your neighbor and look him in the eye and say, each other. Come on. Shared with each other. We were together in this. They met together constantly. All of us need a place to belong. All of us need a warm, welcoming fellowship or family. And you can find that in His church. We need to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We need to be a part of something where we're accomplishing great things in His name. We need to experience faith, family, and fellowship. Everywhere you look, there's people hungering hungering for this community, for this fellowship, this true sense of love and family, which is why, how many knows, it was so hard during the COVID, I call it meltdown, the COVID quarantine where we were not able to come together. And so we did worship what? Together online. And we were just typing in words Hey, how you doing, Teresa? Hey, how you doing, Bob? And it's like, we're, we're in this family, but we're not together, but we're, we're together in the best way that we knew. It was hard for all churches, not just ours, to not be together and to not have the community, not to have that koine and that fellowship. The church, this church that we're looking at in the book of Acts was a spiritual connecting point for the disciples who loved Jesus and wanted to make Jesus known. It was home base. 
How many knows about what I'm talking about? Home base. You play a game, you got home, you want to get back to home base. There's safety there. You know that you're going to be welcome. It's, it's, it's home. You can't, I'm here, I'm home. And this is what we find in the body of Christ. So many different analogies that talk about a Christian disconnected from their church. It's like a football player without a team. A soldier without a platoon, a, a student without their class, a trumpet player echoing sounds without the rest of the band to make it sound like melody, a child without a family, a Christian without his or her church. Love is the distinguishing characteristic that draws people from every age, background, ethnicity, from, from every walk of life, and it just melts and molds them together beautifully in His church, made one in Christ. Number four is this in verse number 45. Let me read verse 45. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. I want this to represent ministry. Their involvement in doing something the body of Christ sharing. It's not just about us and what we can get, what we can glean. It's about how can I serve and give? How can I help? All of you have gifts, talents, and abilities, spiritual gifts that God has plugged into your spiritual hardwire. You are hardwired to serve, to give. It's your ministry. It's what He wants you to do in reaching others. The church provides that, that opportunity, that facet. We were put here to make a contribution, not just consume a seed or consume some good donuts or consume some good tacos and, and lay our head on the pillow at night. We were, we were made to serve. I love to discover spiritual gifts and our new member classes and to see how varied that we are we're not all cut of the same cloth we have so many gifts some people love to work with babies others say keep babies away they poop and they puke and i don't like to just have that's not my gift others love to work with children and others love to work with teenagers and others love to, to work with young marrieds others love to sing Others say, please don't have me sing. I, don't, I can't carry a tune. Others love to build, and others love to construct, and others love to administrate, and others love figures and numbers, and others love... There's so many beautiful things. You know what it says in Ephesians 2, verse 10? It says this, God has made us what we are. Isn't that awesome? He's made you what we are. And in Christ Jesus, God made us to do what? good works, which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. Look at those last couple. Live our lives doing the good works of how we've been gifted to serve. The church is about using those gifts. I, I have to tell you, I, I, I found something going on that wasn't scripted and it was just part of the church members doing ministry last week. We had to say goodbye to a, a couple of families, again, moving, transitioning. One of those was, was Carol Jean, and Carol Jean says, Pastor, one of the toughest things in this move is I'm not going to be able to take my church family with me. I, I'm going to have to find a duplicate, OIG, over where I'm going. It's just going to be hard. And as I was leaving that particular service, walked outside, I, I found one of our members praying for Carol Jean in her car right before she was to head out. Didn't ask this church member to do that. He did it of his own volition, praying, the Bible says, one for another. And I'm so happy to see Bob Brennan doing just an act of ministry, just an act of love for others because that's what we are about. We discover the gifts. We use the gifts. Some of you love to clean. Some of you think you're allergic to cleaning. Some of you love 
to just go ahead and vacuum. Others of you hate vacuuming, and I have found some of you. I have found some that love to vacuum, and I'll say, could you help me after a big event? And others I know, I better not ask because I might get gently slapped. No, not really, but you know what I mean. So we, we have giftings. We ought to use those giftings in the right way. An opportunity for all of us soon to serve is through Vacation Bible School, August 1 through 4. Lastly, number 5 is this. It's verse 47. The church provides the avenue for evangelism, both local and global. Verse 47 says this, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The Lord added to the number because uh, the body of Christ was serving faithfully, going out, sharing the good news, leading people to Him. And the Lord added this wonderful, wonderful um, uh, infusion of life through people meeting Jesus and getting saved and being a part of the church. You see, the good news was never meant for just one generation. It wasn't meant for one race. It wasn't meant for one gender, male or female. This was meant for all people, all races, all, both men and women, boys and girls. It was meant for all of us. Church's mission is the same as Christ's mission. Say it with me. To seek and to save those that are lost. When you get saved, God adds you to His church, and therefore His mission becomes uh, your mission. His cause becomes your cause. You know what? Back in this day when we're reading Acts 2, the church grew from 120 to 3,120 in one day. The next chapter over in Acts 4, the number had risen to 5,000. And by Acts 6, we read the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. They probably couldn't put an accurate count on it all because they knew they had a mission. They had a purpose. The church was there for them. They were a part of it. They were moving forward, and they were reaching lives. I want you to look right at me as I want to ask a question to you. I want to ask you a question. Heaven is going to be glorious. Heaven is going to be wonderful. Hell is going to be horrific. It's not a party place. It's a place of agony. It's a place of shrieking. It's a place of just constant pain. Heaven. Who are you taking to heaven with you? As a result of what you've done in your ministry, how many people are going to heaven because of what you have done, how you have served, how you've prayed, how you've given, how you've gone to just a, the, the far extreme of being involved in ministry. Is there somebody going to be up there because Red Alvey talked to me about Jesus, invited me to church, and led me to the Lord because we were involved in ministry around the altar or around the world, and we did what we could we gave, we prayed, we served, we shared. And now they're going to say, thank you for giving me the Lord. Thank you that I'm up in heaven with Jesus Christ. It's all because of what you have done for me. We've got the mission to share the love, the grace to a lost and broken world. God wants to use you in His church. God wants you to be involved. He wants you to have the rhythm of the flourishing fellowship and attendance of being together in his house doing his will. Simply put, our vision for our church is simple. Three words. All of you know it. Loving, living, and leaving. Uh, not leaving, leading. <laughs> oh my goodness, there you go. Bam. There are a few that leave, but... Loving, living, leading. Say it with me. Loving, living, leading. <laughs> ah, you got to laugh, all right? Got to laugh. Loving God passionately, living life abundantly, leading people purposefully. Truth about church is it's not a building. It's people. 
It's you and me together in relationship, fellowship, not just, just to eat tacos, not just to do yard sales, not just to collect books, not just to go ahead and wash cars, not just to go ahead and hold VBS. The purpose that we're here, you see it, it's discipleship. The purpose is to be in awe of who he is, the sense of belonging, community, using my gifts for ministry and being involved to evangelize. Would you stand with me all over this place, all over this congregation? On this July 4th weekend, God wanted to speak to you about his church and your part and your place. Some of you might be on the fringe. Some of you might be right there dead set. Some of you might be in between, but he wants us to move closer to the relationship and utilizing everything that we have for the advancement of his church, his kingdom, his name into all the earth. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you for speaking this word to us today. That we've got to cling to the church in these last days. It's not something that we can take for granted or we can treat haphazardly. This relationship with our church is vital. Vital to our growth, vital to our health, spiritually vital to being nourished and strengthened service in, service out, week in, week out. So Lord, I pray that you'll help us to grip, cling to the church like never before. Not because it's a perfect church, because there will be some flaws and there will be some issues and problems that we'll work through and work on. But Lord, give us a, a grace and under, understanding to allow people to grow, allow people to just deepen, allow people to mature in their faith from one level to one to the next area. With every head bowed and every eye closed, there could be somebody in the service today that has not even committed themselves to Jesus Christ, never been born again, never been saved. Or you're so far away that today His Spirit is speaking to you to come back and surrender and yield your all. Get back on the train. Get back on the right path and be involved in the middle of His church. And if that's your position and you need to have his cleansing flow, his cleansing grace, his cleansing stream wash away all sin and mistake. I, I ask that you would pray with me right now. Just simply say this. Say, Jesus, I need you. I need your cleansing. I need your forgiveness. I want to be a part of your church. I want to do your will. I want to learn about what my heart is with my gifts but right now please cleanse me bring me in a right standing relationship with God the Father set me on a right path allow this church to help me to grow allow this church to help to fellowship and serve in community with me I ask this right now in Jesus name everyone said amen I'd have prayed that prayer, and I pray that you did. Mean it with all of your heart. On this July 4th weekend, I'm, I might be asking too much, and you might be saying, Pastor, just, just let us go. I, I got the dinner just cooking and going, but I just feel like the Lord wants to gather us, bring us to a place of surrender, all of us, with all of our gifts and all of our abilities, to the front to dedicate to him. So as we begin to sing this, I'm going to ask you to move out. Even if you just feel like in the aisle, some of you will go from the far side all the way to the other, back by the, uh, the flag. I want you to flood the front as people of the body of his, of his church, serving him, knowing him, doing his will. Would you come as they begin to sing right now? Come on, church. You're a part of that. It's all about you and working together in his church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Join us. Just fill the sides. Fill the back. Fill the aisles. 
whatever you're comfortable with, just move out and say, I, I'm a part of that church, Pastor. I'm a part of this fellowship, Pastor. I want to be a part of all the things that's going on. Hallelujah. Just lift up those hands. Come on. Lift them up. God, I, I want to be in awe of who you are. I want to be in awe of your words and grace. I want to be in awe of your touch. I want to be in awe of the Holy Spirit's movement. Hallelujah. Salvation, divine healing, water baptism, spirit baptism. I want to be in awe of all of it. God, I want you to touch every one of us today. Touch us, Lord God. Let the power of your spirit, Lord, just set us apart. Now let's worship him. Come on. Great are you, Lord. Begin to pray for people around you, members of the body of Christ, members of the church, people that might be in need and people that might not. They just want you to pray over them. Would you pray? People around you, lift up their names and say, in Jesus' name, be with Jonas, be with Rob and Charlotte. In Jesus' name, lift up their names, lift up their names, the relationship that you have. You are members together of the body of Christ. 
We weep when somebody weeps. When somebody is happy, we get happy. When somebody is in need, we understand and we want to come and help do what we can to alleviate the strain and the stress. You're a part of His church. You're a part of His church. God loves you. God needs you to act, to, to be involved, to be a part of that. Thank you, Jesus. as uh, we conclude this service for the time being Lord we with our eyes and our focus we train them upon you you are the author and the finisher of our faith Lord I pray that you would bless every person that Lord is here or every member of the church every person Lord that considers this their home. Father, I pray that you'll even welcome, Lord, the new ones in and let them know that this is a place where they can flourish and grow. Send us out, Lord, to do ministry. Send us out to do evangelism, both locally and globally. Help us to use every resource, to use every ability, every gift. And Lord, we yield it. We share it so that your name might be heard and people might be drawn to you. Bless the church of Jesus Christ assembled here at O'Fallon Assembly. Bless them as they leave today and go to share light and share love. I ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, just so you know, I love and appreciate you. I don't know if I say it enough, but as I look at you, I'm just so delighted, so happy for what you mean to this fellowship, to what you mean to this body of believers, what you mean to me. And I just thank God for you, and I pray that you would just go knowing that God loves and cares about you in a very specific personal way, and I do too. Now you get the chance to share a little bit of love, how you want to with other people in the church. If you don't know who they are, please get acquainted. If you do, show some love. God bless you. Have an incredible week. I love you. God bless you.